I opened my window for the first time in weeks today to collect a bunch of my fly friends. But they were being very lazy, so I decided to harvest them and put them to work. For example, say I don't want to pay for my $21 breakfast burrito, I simply call my fly babies into battle and leave a body on the plate when I'm finished. Sometimes, for good measure, I'll even put one in the water. Then, I call over the manager and tell him that there is not only a fly in my food, but I am gravely allergic to the fly. Then when the bill comes, I change the total to a negative, and then they pay me back. Another great reason why you should always carry a bag of dead flies with you is for retail therapy. I want to treat my mom with some makeup, so I simply find a tester and drop a quick friend on it. Then I take it to the front counter and tell them that I could have put a fly in my mom's eye. But then they give it to me for free, and I go about my day. But guess what? It even works at Olive Garden. After I'm seated, finally, I get my free breadsticks, and and I take one into the bathroom and sacrifice one of my babies for the cause. Then once the fly is on the breadstick, I exit the bathroom and walk over to the management and tell them that there is a fly on my breadstick. And boom, refund. So next time you're looking at the poor lost souls on your windowsill, just say, come on, man, it's time to scam. Today I made a fake plane ticket with my DIY skills so I could go to the Tokyo Olympics because I think I'm really good at gymnastics. But the problem is Japan is only letting actual Olympic athletes go there because of COVID. So I finessed the system by buying a random plane ticket to Alabama so I could get into the airport. So once I got to the airport, I found the flight that was headed to Tokyo. And then I walked over to the gate to sit down and I crossed off Alabama on my ticket. And then I used it while they were boarding and I managed to board the flight to Tokyo. And after I took my seat, I was just sitting there realizing I'm really going to Japan, huh? And then we took off and I was enjoying the flight until I looked at the safety manual and saw that I was on one of those malfunctioning Boeing 737 MAX planes. You know, the ones that decide they want to be a car while in midair. And that's when I started feeling really bad turbulence. And then I remembered my phone wasn't on airplane mode. And then that's when it got really bad because the plane started falling apart. And all of a sudden, the oxygen mask came down and I just accepted that the last song I'll have ever listened to in my life was Ed Sheeran. Anyways, the crowd was getting closer and closer. And oh, I actually just fell asleep. <laughs> Anyways, um, now I'm in Tokyo. Um... I was enjoying some banana on the cob and scrolling through TikTok when I saw someone playing this Mario Kart in real life game. So I took my friend's credit card and ordered it. But when it came in the mail and I actually got to open it up and play it, the game was about as fun as listening to Ed Sheeran out of your own free will. So not fun at all. But you know what? It was okay because I bought it for the only purpose of seeing if I could take it through a drive through and ordering something. So I strapped my credit card to it and a walkie talkie so that I can order through the microphone. And I taped it to Luigi really good and then drove all the way over to Popeyes. And it was time to release Luigi and see if I could successfully order a fry. I set everything up and then just like that, the little Italian was off. But as he drove up to the microphone, I didn't think they could see him. So at first I did some donuts to get their attention. And then as I was spinning him around, they were like, okay, 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 okay. and I was about to tell them my order when I saw there was a car coming into the drive-thru. I panicked and grabbed my switch to try and drive away, but it said it was disconnected. So I ran over to the drive-thru and our favorite plumber Luigi was killed by a Mitsubishi. Anyways, the funeral is on Monday. Please comment your condolences if you would like to attend. Today I went to the fair so I could try and go on that Tilt-A-Whirl ride that was about to collapse in this TikTok that I saw. But when we were standing in line for it, I noticed some sparks flies that flew by and a literal screw had been sharded out. And I was like, well, the Juice World concert's gonna be really good after this. Anyways, we got on and found our seats and put the thing on. And I don't know what they did, but they had cranked that speed up to the max. And you know what? It surprisingly didn't fall apart, but instead I just passed out like a little infant that can't stay awake. Anyways, I got off and was feeling kind of hungry. And I saw the cotton candy booth, so I went over to it. And they gave some to us for free because they were so nice. And I was enjoying my cotton candy when my friends dragged me onto this swingy thingy. So I reluctantly gave the dude my ticket and found my seat. And once it started moving, I realized that cotton candy and motion sickness is a terrible mix. They were swinging our butts around this thing like no tomorrow, baby. Because I threw up. And it sprayed on a worker. And I'm never allowed back. I went to Walmart today to buy some Ed Sheeran merch, aka cabbage, because that's probably what he smells like. But when I grabbed my cabbage and went to go pay, I didn't realize I was in the makeup section trying to pay for a cabbage. And they didn't know how to ring up my cabbage, but any freaking ways, the cashier girly dropped my cabbage. And I had to pick it up off the ground, and it was kind of musty looking. But regardless, I left the store and walked home with it, and I was about to start munching on it when it slipped out of my hands and dropped again. And my little cabbage baby started rolling down the hill, and I eventually caught up to it, and it looked beat up. But I picked it up and took a crunchy cabbage bite and decided it would be a good movie snack. So... I brought my cabbage to the movie theater and it was all fun until I remembered I was watching The Quiet Place. And you know what wasn't a quiet place? My insides after eating Walmart cabbage off the ground. It was brewing like kombucha mixed with dynamite in my stomach and I had to leave and go home because it was dead silent in the theater and everyone heard my stomach grumbling. Oh. Today I went to go get the Moderna vaccine and it hurt a little bit when they gave it to me but afterwards I went home and I took the band-aid off but as I was peeling it off I noticed something hard was underneath and when I pulled it out and looked at it I saw a microchip I've been microchipped I thought that was fake but I had to get to the bottom of this so I grabbed a microchip adapter and put it in my phone and a folder came up saying we see you
and in it was a picture that said meet Candace at 42 Wallaby Way at 2 p.m. And I was really scared, but the next day I went to the address on my bike and it ended up taking me to this huge building and I found my way in. But as I was looking around, there was no one there, so I shouted, Candace! Who's Candace? And all of a sudden, the lights went out and I felt something grab me. Next thing I knew, I woke up in a chair tied up. I was so confused and I shouted, Who is Candace? What is Candace? Then out of the darkness, he appeared and he said, <laughs> Candace d <laughs> I was joining some random Zoom calls today so I could make some friends. But after accidentally joining an Amish call in the Zoom, I accidentally joined the Zoom call with this guy in it. And I was like, who's that? Until I realized I had joined a call with Dr. Fauci, the chief medical advisor to the president. And then I looked in the mirror to make sure I didn't look like a cockroach. And then as soon as I looked presentable, I grabbed my laptop and brought it out to the living room. And then I joined the call and I was like, how are you, Dr. Fauci? And he said, I'm good, Ben. Nice to be with you. How you doing? And then I froze and tried to think of like a question about COVID or something. And that's when I remembered my uncle texting me out of the blue saying that there's pee in the vaccine. So I was like, let me set the record straight. So I asked him, the vaccine looks like it's just a few drops of water. And I feel like a lot of people don't really know what's actually going on in there. You, what vaccine did you get, Ben? I got Moderna. I got Moderna too. So, okay. what, so when you and I got injected, what happened? It went into the muscle. The body recognizes the protein of that virus and neutralizes it. I feel like that was like a, a crash course in a PhD in biology, but <laughs> it all made sense. I, I figured it out. Well, you heard it from the White House and Bed of the Week. The vaccines are safe. Go get it, please. I was picking the ticks out of my dogs first so I could collect them and inject them with acid until they pop. But just before I could even get to doing that, my phone went off. And when I checked it, my friends had invited me to go rollerblading with them. So I dropped what I was doing and I met them at the roller derby rink. Now I paid $10 to rent some skates, but listen, these babies were impossible to put on. And when I stood up, it felt like I had fettuccine noodles for legs. But it was actually really fun, except there was a small child who kept trying to chase me and I'm allergic to small children. So I tried to avoid him at all costs. But then he got too close to me and I ran him over. And in the distance, I heard some lady who I think was his mom screaming at me about her little overgrown feet. I so I left the roller rink and escaped into the mall, but I could still hear her screaming in the distance, so I started running. And then that's when I saw a security guard and told him that there was a psychopath chasing me. And thankfully, he snuck me out of the mall, and um, turns out she got arrested later for biting an employee. So... <laughs> Today, I went on a romantic date in France. Just kidding. I ate a plain bagel with mold, but I am tired of being single. So I grabbed my phone and downloaded Tinder so I could use the passport feature to meet people from across the world for free. All of a sudden, my phone dinged, and when I checked it, I had a match with Remy. We started chatting about our love for cheese, and I don't even need to go to Paris now because I have a video date with Remy thanks to Tinder Passport. Wish me luck. So I lost my debit card for the fifth time this year and the bank won't give me a new one. So I went to Foot Locker today to sell my feet pics because I'm completely broke. And after looking everywhere and asking an employee, I could not find the locker full of feet pics. And I thought this place is such a scam. Why would it be called Foot Locker if there's no locker where people can buy feet pics? That's when I had the realization I can make my own Foot Locker and sell my feet pics on the side of the road. I started by holding up an iPad with some samples, but people kept driving by and no one bought any. But you know what they say, baby? Work smarter, not harder. So when I got home, I started making a sign that said feet pictures three dollars so I painted it real nice and then I hit the streets again and when I got to a busy street I taped the iPad to it with a Google slideshow playing of my feet and I waved it around a bit more but even that wasn't working so I had to do what I never thought I'd do I seductively took my shoe off and then lowered the sock off my foot and then I started waving at people driving by with my feet but it it, it was too much I ran home and felt so dirty and unwanted because no one wanted my little big I was watching my comfort movie Pitch Perfect on HBO Max for the seventh time today because it's the only thing that makes me feel alive. But then as I was watching it, I got the idea that since I'm a talentless blob of bones and skin, I should learn how to play the cups. So I grabbed a bunch of wine glasses to spice it up and I invented the glass song and I spent days studying Pitch Perfect on HBO Max perfecting my talent so that I could get so good so I could perform for the world to see. So I started to print out flyers and then I went to the first stop of my glass song world tour in Paris. And when I got there, I stuck flyers everywhere to really get the word out about my Show. But then as I was doing my sound checks on the day of my performance, I got a little too carried away and... So anyways, I'm just gonna stick to watching Pitch Perfect on HBO Max and you should too. I was sitting on the floor eating a Rice Krispie snack when my dad randomly came home with a dog. We don't have a dog. We have a cat. So what is that? And I said, did you just buy a dog? And my dad told me he just bought a dog. So um, I guess I have a dog in my dad's house now. And I went to go pet it, but it keeps running away from me and looking at me like I'm a demon, which I am. <laughs> but it still made me sad. And I was sitting around trying to figure out how to become friends with this baby dog. And then I realized I could probably give it something like a tree. So I got off my butt and I went upstairs and I looked in the pantry and found some dog bones. I opened up the package and grabbed 
grabbed a bone and then I slowly approached him and placed it on the mat. But then my dad's cat Luna got in the way. Oh. Anyways, I gave it another bone and <laughs> it bit my hand so hard like three fingers fell off. I had to call an ambulance. Just kidding. Uh, he let me come near and when I touched him, he twitched and it scared me a little bit. But then he let me pet him. And now we're almost besties and I took him on a little walk and took some cute pictures with him. So if you want to see more of Sammy, I posted the pics on my Instagram at Ben of the Week. Okay, bye. I like to collect mold off of my old moldy bread and put it in a baggie that I keep in my pocket so whenever I'm out and about at an overpriced restaurant getting an overpriced $15 acai bowl, I can order one and then eat the whole thing and then once I'm done, I take out my mold babies and pop one in so I can take it to the register and go full Karen mode and show them the mold and then boom, baby! Refund. I've done this in the past with dead flies at Olive Garden, but I like having bread in my pocket instead of dead decaying flies. Anyways, I wanted to give my mom some makeup, so I tried it at Sephora by putting some mold in the makeup, and then I brought the sample to the manager, and I got a free one. And then I sanitized my hands to get the mold off, of course. Anyways, after Sephora, I really wanted some tortilla chips, so I grabbed a bag, opened it up, popped some mold in, and then boom! I took it to the cashier, and I got a refund, baby. And then when I got home, I took a bite and forgot to take the mold out! Boom, baby, mold poisoning. I don't know if you remember, but five years ago today, Harambe the gorilla was D-worded. So, I decided to take a quick trip to infiltrate the Cincinnati Zoo, because I think he might still be alive and the whole thing was a publicity stunt. Anyways, when I got there, I did a bird call to attract some birds to land on me as a disguise, and it worked. A bunch of gay chickens landed on me, and I had the perfect disguise. I was walking around looking like a zoo employee, which let me sneak into the employees-only area with no suspicion. I was walking around in the back rooms when I tried saying hi to the employees, but they were busy cleaning fish doogie, so... I stopped to pet some stingrays, because I couldn't find Harambe's enclosure and then I pet some sharks and they were so cool just like a little bit slimy and then I saw some jellyfish and they're so pretty so I reached in to pet <laughs> where am I? the place you go when you pet a jellyfish stupid oh well let me see last night I went to Chuck E. Cheese to lie and say it's my birthday to get free pizza and it worked, baby! But the place was terrifying, and the food was even scarier. And after a few bites, I started feeling sick like I had worms in my stomach. So I got up, and I stumbled out of the restaurant, and I went home. Then the next day, I scheduled an emergency Zoom doctor's visit, and he told me that I'm lactose intolerant. And I was like, what the hell? I don't lactose, I got all 10, baby! But then he told me to put my feet away, and I was like, you're right, you should be paying me for this, not the other way around, buddy. And then he started telling me, you can't eat pizza anymore. But his video started to cut out, but it's okay, because I know what lactose intolerance is. I can't have bread anymore! So I got rid of all my bread and all of that fart food right in the trash and then I grabbed some milk and chugged nothing but pure milk for a few days And you know what it was really good for a bit until I started feeling a storm brewing ten times stronger than what Chuck E. Cheese did to me So I immediately ran to the bathroom and So apparently lactose intolerance is the milk one, but at least I don't lactose baby Today, I pretended to be in the hospital to get my celebrity crush to notice me. And here's how I did it. First, I was editing my name onto a hospital band, and one of the rows said sex. So I said, yes, wiki face. <laughs> and then I walked over to my printer that I haven't used in years, and I thought it was going to light on fire, and somehow that old mama worked, and it printed out my band. So I cut it out and put it on my wrist. Drip, my drip, my drip, yeah. And then I tore my bed apart, and I ripped the bed sheet off my bed to wear as a little hospital robe. Then once I had that, I pulled my bed off and dragged it over to a blank wall. <laughs> Anyways, then I made my room look like a hospital by taping hospital hospital signage and then I laid down in my hospital bed and I made the finishing touches with a phone charger and then I put some headphones in my nose to really pull it all together then I finally took my snapchat and I added a black and white filter to be all dramatic and I made the caption down bad wish I had a big booty B to give me CPR and I sent it to her then I ripped all the cords out and the bracelet too and I put my shirt back on and I was waiting around when she finally replied and when I opened it she said Today, I accidentally burned out my house because I was boiling Listerine and Red Bull to make delicious tea when I saw a wasp had waltzed into my house. And I'm extremely allergic, so I grabbed a container to try and capture him so I could send him back to hell. And I got him, but then I realized if I try and get the lid on, he's gonna fly out and sting me, and then I will end up in hell and he will haunt me forever. So I dropped it and I ran and grabbed a piece of paper and then I put it back on and slid it under. And I actually managed to pull out the paper and I had successfully abducted him. So I put him on a plate and microwaved him until he lit on. Just kidding. I realized I'll definitely go to hell if I do that, so I let him outside and carefully put him down and release the hatches and he kicked it away but then he got up and chased me inside and i closed the door and i thought it was safe and oh i forgot to turn the stove burner off and 
So I was trying to watch that Luca movie on this sketchy website until I saw this ad that said some lady named Gertrude was a hot single in my area. And I thought, oh my god, it's a heat wave. I need to get Gertrude hydrated before she gets heat stroke. I clicked the picture and immediately 20 programs started downloading on my computer. And I was like, wow, Gertrude must be in STEM or computer science or something. Then all of a sudden I looked down and I had a text from Gertrude and she said that she needs fluids immediately. So I told her that I'm coming and I asked her where. And after she gave me the address, I got in my car and I drove to the address, which happened to be in Ikea. But anyway, she said to come to the bedding center and my GPS took me to the exact room, but no one was there and I was getting a little bored, so I decided to lay down for a quick nap. But when I woke up, Ikea was closed and I got up and tried to leave, but that's when I realized my wallet and keys were stolen. And I was really freaked out, but I found the exit and as soon as I got outside, I saw, I saw some figures standing behind the trees. He started approaching me and I was like, oh man, I'm sorry, was that your girl? It was too late because the man was angry and he attacked me. <laughs> I was enjoying some olives and yogurt when a piece of paper slipped through my mail slot. And when I went to go check it, a huge box flew through the slot and hit me in the head. That's when I remembered I ordered this game called Incoherent from Amazon at like 2am. But nevertheless, I was so excited to play it. But I realized I don't have any friends around me to play with. So I decided to call some of my besties instead. I dialed the number and I was like, hey bestie. And they said, this is Taco Bell. So I was like, okay, first round, neck key menage. Please don't call this number again. And I said, no silly, it's Nicki Minaj. What about pressed feet tin? Yeah, we're taking your phone number to the police. <laughs> I was like, no, it's breastfeeding. Duh. The police are really coming home. So I bought this busted robot vacuum off of Wish, and it hardly works, like, at all. But I felt bad that it's trapped in my house all day and has to eat these nuts off the floor. Has to eat both of these nuts. <laughs> Anyways, I was always wondering what would happen if I just set it loose in the street So I took it outside and set it free by bringing it outside and walking it And I got a few weird looks from people, but they weren't walking their vacuum pets Which makes them look like the idiots Anyways, I was following it and I noticed it was actually leading me to this warehouse And I was really scared to go in, but Bofa brought me here So I opened this huge door, which led me down a weird hallway And that's when I realized little Bofa had taken me to the NASA headquarters Because I was hearing some weird, strange song playing And water began to pour in and I started panicking as it started to fill up and that's when I heard a voice on the intercom say, What do you feel like? And that's when it clicked and I said, An astronaut in the ocean! And that is how I was selected to become the first TikToker chosen by NASA to go to space. I was making sushi with raw chicken instead of raw fish, but I accidentally dropped it on the floor. And when I bent over to pick it up, I saw my legs and wondered if I could wax them so they would feel like two slippery hot dogs. So I canceled my chicken sushi, and once I was done cleaning it all up, I went to my garage to find a bottle of Gorilla Glue to wax my legs. But here's the big old catch. I can't make a single noise waxing my legs, because if I wake up my dog, she will literally pee herself in the beanbag chair. So with that in mind, I grabbed some plastic wrap and put the glue on it and made a little waxing strip. Then I knelt down and put the strip on slowly, and at first I was like, this isn't too bad. It just kind of feels kind of numb. And then it started burning and I realized I had to do it now so I ripped it off and it didn't get the wax off I panicked and I tried to wipe it off but it just shredded the paper towel got even stickier and also my dog woke up and peed herself but at least the sushi was kind of fired Today, I was in the drive through line at Starbucks trying to get the Donald Trump drink, which is just a cup that's full of sad old man tears. But as I pulled up, I was feeling generous, and I told the barista, can I pay for the order in front of me? And the Starbucks employee said, that's so sweet. Let me bring that up for you. Would you like anything else? So I said, uh, can I get a cake pop and a white hot chocolate? But that's when the barista said, that comes up to $94.24. I stopped and said, what in the star f did you say? And the barista told me they ordered seven drinks, four pastries, and a travel mug. So I told the barista, hey, uh, I'm actually just getting at the cake pop. But the person ahead of me had already driven away and they told me I had to pay or the cops would be called. So I pulled up and paid, but I wasn't gonna stop until I got my travel mug. I followed the car until it parked and I approached the window and I said, give me the mug. Anyways, look at my $94 Starbucks travel mug that I had to pry out of a sucker mom's hands. Today, I thought it'd be funny to use the Wendy's nuts joke at Wendy's. So I said, uh, dude, do, do you like Wendy's? Wendy's nuts slap your face. I was, in, I was in total shock. Then he said, Yeah, we get that all the time. How does it feel, loser? The joke I had been preparing for for days had been used against me and shattered my world. Then the employee said, Well, are you gonna order anything? I said, Um, a chocolate frosty, please? Choco lick these frosty nuts. I started crying. There was nothing to do but cry. I knew it was going to be 99 cents, so I asked, Do you have Apple Pay? And he replied with, Apple Pay these nuts. And that one didn't even make sense, but it hurt. It hurt so bad. I had to make a decision in this moment if the Frosty was worth the humiliation. So I pulled up, and when he handed me the Frosty, I went to go grab it, and I... I...
so today was April Fools and I got a doorbell notification which I thought was strange because I'm not expecting any packages and when I checked it I saw a box sitting outside my house I was like what the heck is a baguette that sounds like the opposite of a you know what I'm talking about anyways I picked it up and brought it inside and realized it makes vegetable pasta and I was so excited so I opened it up but there was no vaghetti. There was just my hair. And I started panicking because I was like, how did they get my human hair? And that's when I realized that a month ago, I cut my own hair and put it online as a real Michael Jackson wig and sold it to someone for $5,000. But they probably got my address from the return address on the package. Anyways, I looked in the hair and found a note saying I need to lock my door because... So I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off the black market, but I was thinking, how do you even get rid of dry ice? Like, it doesn't melt, because it's literally frozen air, and it repels water, which means it's homophobic. Oh wait, I mean hydrophobic. Anyways, I'm clinically stupid, so I broke a piece in half and plopped it in my toilet to see what would happen. And I was making these fun little bubbles, so I filled the bathtub and grabbed the rest of it and threw it in some water to see what would happen. And anyways, that was a mistake, because it filled a whole shower up with gases, and I remembered it's not frozen air, it's frozen CO2, and I was getting lightheaded, and I wasn't trying to die. So I took the piece out and I brought it to the sink and I jammed it down the drain as best as I could so it would go away. And then I took a deep breath of relief until I looked down to see I was standing in a puddle of water and boom, my pipes exploded. There was water spraying me everywhere in the face I got everywhere. Anyways, uh, I may have caused a catastrophic water main failure in my whole neighborhood and flooded 102 buildings. So, um, I don't think the vegan chicken nuggets were worth it. Ever since Trump got banned off of every social media platform, I actually discovered the last way that he's been able to whine to his little Trump stands since he can't be on Twitter anymore. And you're probably wondering, what is it? Well, last January, my number got leaked online and someone took my number and gave it to the Trump campaign. So they've been sending me nonstop texts, emails, and calling me like once a week. Oh, support Donald Trump. And whenever they call me, I, um... <laughs> Politely decline. Anyways, since he's been banned, it's been real quiet. Until one day, I was drinking Red Bull out of my frog mug on the balcony when a piece of paper hit me in the head from the sky and I saw a carrier pigeon flying away. Anyways, I looked at the note and it was a note from Trump himself saying he's bored and losing his job and needs $50. <laughs> you know what I did? I went looking for the perfect pigeon to send back to the President of the United States and I found a strong young pigeon with just a dash of rabies. I showed it a picture of Trump, pointed it in the direction of the White House, and I said, fly, baby, fly. Okay, so I bought one of those things that lets you FaceTime your dog and shoot treats at them. But today I was looking at the camera and I noticed that she's been taking all her treats behind the couch for some reason. So I went to go see what she was doing with them and um, she's been storing them so that she can pretend like I never gave her one in the first place and then ask for more like the fat little bitch she is. And yes, I can call her that because bitch means female dog and she is a female dog. Anyways, I had enough of her scamming me. So I decided to empty out the treat machine and fill it with her least favorite treat. Green beans, baby! I put a bean on the plate and cut it up into small little pieces, and then I loaded it into the machine, and I shot it out at her, and at first she didn't want to eat it, but then she got bored, and she ate them, and I was so happy, because I thought I got her on a diet, until I heard a weird coughing noise come from downstairs. I ran downstairs to see what was happening, and that's when I saw her in my beanbag bed, next to the beans when she had thrown out, oh, no, I got beans in my bed! Since it's now 2021, that means that the Global Panda Express is officially over. Oh, wait, I was just kidding. I meant the Global Pandemic is officially over. They might be thinking, how is that possible? Well, two weeks ago, I cured coronavirus by filling a bottle rocket with hand sanitizer, and I sent it into the atmosphere. And for the past two weeks, the hand sanitizer has been spraying into the air, and people all around the world have been breathing in my vaccine air. Now, to test my theory, I decided today to see if I can find any pesky COVID germs lying around. So, I went to the gas station station and I licked the debit keypad and then I licked my fingers after typing in my pin which is one two three four and then after that I went to Panda Express and I enjoyed some yummy shrimp but when I was driving home I felt the COVID-21 germs from licking the gas station keypad bubbling in my stomach and I went home and I fell to my bed and I started coughing when all of a sudden I coughed up a piece of Lego but I kept coughing and eventually I had enough Lego pieces of a little Lego house so maybe COVID-21 isn't that bad